Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to continue talking about Frank Zane's recommendations for developing a classical and symmetrical physique. Now today we're going to focus on his guide for developing the chest so that it has this appearance of a wide square like chest. Um, he's a big believer in not over developing the chest and I'm going to go through why. I'm also going to go through the exercises that he suggests for developing the pec fully so that no area is too overdeveloped because in his opinion it makes the aesthetic look of the physique be skewed off. Now we start off with this great shot of, of uh, Frank Zane here. We can see that he has a always very aesthetic and athletic physique but the most important thing that I notice about this photo is his chest development although is not massive it is still full and you can see that every part of the chest is developed be the upper part of the pec the lower part the outer and inner and he does focus on this in his exercise selection and in the way he performs the exercises also you'll notice that his shoulders um, because the the chest is not overly developed you can really see the broadness of his shoulders which again uh, sets off that V taper at the very top very beautifully. So let's have a look at Frank Zane's recommendations for training the chest. Now I've said this a couple of times before but Frank Zane was a very big believer of sculpting the body and to him shape meant everything for developing a classical and symmetrical physique because by having shape, having developed your own genetic potential um, this will distinguish you between other bodybuilders. It will give you a personal identity, as he puts it. And that's this is why he actually always trained for shape, because with shape, eventually, as he put it, size and cuts will follow. This is beautifully represented in this di in this uh, sorry in this photo here, where you can see again his chest is developed almost evenly. The upper chest is almost as large as the lower pec, and this is what I like about. Uh, Frank Zane's approach to to uh, training the chest. He never really overdeveloped the lower chest like so many of the golden era bodybuilders. And this makes his overall appearance kind of resemble a, a the, the armor plating on on a on a yeah on a Greek or Roman soldier kind of kind of an appearance that you get from from looking at it. The overall shape of the chest is even. It's it's pretty amazing when you look at this shot here. Now one of the warnings that Frank Zane gives about chest training is that the chest is, as most people know, is such an easy muscle to develop. And to actually develop a wide squared off look, you don't want to overdevelop the lower region of the chest by doing too many bench presses or even dips. Um, having this overdeveloped look makes the delts look way smaller. A good example is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and, and I mean I love Arnold and his physique is, is phenomenal, um, no doubt about it. But you will notice, and I've noticed from many discussions with people, that a lot of people talk about Arnold's shoulders looking small. And that is because his chest was so damn huge that it overlook, you, you overlook the shoulders. It really does affect the visual effect of the physique. And in that respect, Frank Zane is correct. And you can clearly see that by in this diagram here, in, sorry, in this diagram, in this photo, um, the, the chest is not over, overpowering the deltoids. Instead, the deltoids, because he's developed the deltoids to the maximum um, potential that he had, uh, really create this wonderful silhouette effect of the V taper. Um, not only that, the way he developed his chest, you can see, as I mentioned in a previous slide, the whole chest is developed evenly. The upper chest, the lower chest are in equal proportion, and he has a wonderful definition on the inner part of the chest as well as the outer. So his, his focus on shape and sculpting the chest over size is very clear when we see photos of Frank Zane at his peak. Again, with most of these exercises, uh, Frank Zane recommends doing three to five sets, going for the pump with a maximum of two minutes rest between sets. Now in sculpting the chest, Frank Zane obviously would use uh, the typical golden era exercises such as the bench press and the incline press. The bench press, from what I've read, especially now that I own his personal training diaries, I can see that early on in his career he would use up to about 300 pounds and even, yeah, even do 10 reps with that, which is pretty amazing um, for a guy his size. But um, later on in his career, he really in, um, enjoyed the incline press, 
doing both variations of dumbbell and barbell presses to really hit the upper chest and in most workouts he actually only preferred to do incline pressing. Again the whole idea being to balance out the development of the lower and uh, upper pec. Uh, of course the bench press is, is well known as a great mass builder but without the incline press one ends up having a greater lower and middle pec development than upper pec development. So these are the ways he actually chose his exercises. Further, um, he recommends doing dumbbell flies for the outer pecs um, to really sculpt them and uh, as well as cable crossovers for both the inner and outer sections of the pectorals. Um, and as his, I guess, uh, physique matured over time, again, reading the personal training diaries, I've uh, noticed that the cable crossover and the dumbbell fly became a staple. Um, he became more interested in sculpting his physique. So he used these, and, and believe it or not, with not much weight at all. He actually only used very light weight towards the end of his career because he had already developed the mass. Um, the mass that was developed early on in his career using 300 pound bench presses, um, mainly he, he maintained simply by the use of dumbbell flies and cable crossovers. Um, again, he'll vary... He recommends varying the angle if you of the of the fly if you're doing it uh, lying down on a bench, for anywhere from an incline flat to a decline, and of course with cable crossovers, similarly uh, varying the the uh, height of the cable to hit the pec at different regions. And so, how did he uh, incorporate these exercises into his routine? Well, I've mentioned this again before, but I'll quickly mention it now. Um, he for for an intermediate, he recommends. Um, Monday and Thursdays training the upper body, Tuesday and Fridays training the lower body with around three exercises uh, per body part for only three sets each. Um, and with the advanced trainee, he would recommend them training delts and arms on Monday and Thursday, Tuesday and Friday chest and back, Wednesday and Saturday the lower body with about five sets per exercise using as many as five to six exercises per body part. So I really wanted to finish this video off with this photo that I found on the net. Um, I think it's a great representation of the achievements and uh, f uh, I guess the, the direction that Frank Zane had in developing his chest. It's very clear to see that es especially um, when it comes to his chest development, you can really see that he practiced what he preached. He, he wasn't into an overdeveloped chest. It doesn't, uh, I mean, it, it's very impressive, yet it's not overdeveloped. Um, the the uh, muscularity is, is clear, the definition, the striations, everything is there. Uh, it's full all the way from the upper pec down to the lower pec, outer, inner, everything is there, but it is not overdeveloped. Again, just like you said, to develop a wide squared off look on the chest that looks like yeah, Roman armor plating, one has to really focus on developing shape and not overdeveloping any part of the chest because it's very easy to do so. So I um, hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. And thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought about this video. Um, that, that's it for me. Have a great day. Bye for now.